Biden administration is reaching out personally to residents affected by the train derailment and toxic chemical spill along the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. Teams from the Environmental Protection Agency, FEMA, and the CDC knocked on doors of over 530 East Palestine households over the weekend. Officials are providing flyers with additional resources and conducting health surveys. EPA Administrator Michael Reagan will also make his third Regan will also make his third visit to the town today. He's expected to announce a new community center where residents can meet with various agency staff members. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro says he's meeting with officials from Norfolk Southern later this week. The Democrat says the rail operator refused to participate in the unified command in the early days of the crisis and did not provide enough information to federal officials. Clearly, they've been bad actors in this case, and they have a responsibility now to make it good for the good people of Pennsylvania, make it right, make sure that the air they breathe is safe, the water that they drink is safe, the farmland where their animals roam is safe and where their crops are harvested is safe. They have a lot of work to do, and it's going to come, the cost will come out of their pocket. The federal government has made that very clear, and I'll make that clear as well. And then I think they have a responsibility going forward to make sure something like this never happens again. And I'll expect Norfolk Southern uh, to be far more transparent with Pennsylvania uh, if they bring these trains through our Commonwealth in the future. You know, it's so interesting, Willie, with Republicans trashing oh. Joe Biden nonstop and, and constantly focused on, on Joe Biden, what they've done is they've deflected from Norfolk Southern. Hmm. So people aren't talking about what Norfolk Southern's responsibility or the is all the time. That applied to them. Or the regulations that the Republicans stripped out, that Donald Trump stripped out. So they keep it on the Biden administration when, of course, we said whenever there were derailments, Trump never went to those derailments. But they keep talking about like Pete Buttigieg and how he looks in a hat so they can distract people from the fact that Norfolk Southern, uh, uh, who, who, you know, they've been supported by... Right. They, 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 they get, they get the, the, the railroad uh, out of people's mind. It's a bait and switch. It doesn't work. It's the, the railroad's fault. The EPA has been there on the ground from the beginning. It's not Pete Buttigieg. We've said on this show many times he went too late. But the EPA has been on the ground and said it's Norfolk Southern who's paying for all of this. You're going to pay for the cleanup. You're going to pay for any future damages and on and on and on. So that rail company is being held to account by the Biden administration. Jen, whether or not President Biden goes, maybe he will go, maybe he won't go. We'll see. As Joe says, Donald Trump didn't go. And frankly, Elaine Chow, the transportation secretary, didn't go every time there was a train derailment. Though this is obviously an awful tragedy there in that small town. But um, this has become more of a political fight and a cudgel for Republicans to use against the administration than it is a serious debate about who's responsible. Yeah, and it is, you know, and it's hard for the administration. I have been in these situations when I worked at the White House. Uh, it's hard, it's difficult for the administration because it's like, you know, the EPA administrator is the one that has uh, the most to do here dealing with the right. toxic spill. Yeah. Everyone assumes it's Pete Buttigieg's job because he's the transportation secretary and this is a train wreck. Um, so uh, that is, you know, that is when you actually had the job of cleaning up and dealing with it as opposed to just pontificating about it about it it you know it is like it's trickier to it's trickier to deal with um trump has struck a chord with this though i have to say yeah. you know he was when he went to east palestine last week uh he was better than we had seen in other you know more recent times where all he does is complain about himself um in east palestine he was um you know, he was he was he was ag advocating on behalf of the people that were there, aggrieved on their behalf, not aggrieved on his own behalf. And um, uh, I don't you know, that area of Ohio is a, is a tough one. But I think if for Democrats, but if the administration, you got to go, you got to, you, you know, Biden should show up at some point as well. Like you just there's not a lot of political payoff for that area, but there's a responsibility. And the rest of us want to see that the administration is doing everything they yeah, can. EPA Minister Regan going again today, it'll be his third yeah. time. Uh, so this point, White House has not scheduled a presidential visit, but there's, there's some conversations about potentially sending him or the vice president uh, in, in the days ahead. So Mark McKinnon, obviously this is Really, this is a health crisis and a health story, and there's going to be, need to be systems put in place to track for years, if not decades, this fallout from this. We all remember, of course, what happened after September 11th uh, and the toxic fumes there. But 
there's also, of course, a political component to this. Uh, how much risk do you think this does pose to uh, a sitting president? Well, I think it poses a risk, but I think it also poses a risk for Republicans and Donald Trump because the other story beyond health is regulation. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people's eyes were like, boom, when they said, wait a minute, a, a train a mile long has maybe two uh, engineers on it, uh, people responsible for the train. I think a lot of people are realizing the extent to which there isn't any train safety right now in America, and this is just the latest example of it, and that's primarily due to deregulation on Republicans' watch. Also, speaking of that...